Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Break Talus Principle 2, the only series where my opportunity to tell really bad jokes at the beginning of these videos is quickly diminishing as the series comes to a close. So we're here in West 2, the Anthropic Hills, and apologies if the audio in this one sounds a little weird. I'm officially in my new place now, and I haven't quite nailed the acoustics of this room yet. Um, I feel like it's a little bit too echoey, uh, but I guess I'll find out in editing. So normally things begin with the number one, and this area is no exception. Uh, first is number puzzle number one. And we're going to be doing some parkour for the first couple of puzzles here, and I don't normally like to resort to parkour solutions when I don't really have to. Um, but I've already been here way too long, and between that and moving, uh, it's just been way too long since I've put out an episode and I'm starting to get antsy. Uh, but anyway, we can just drop into the first area here. And we're going to take one of these uh, activators with us to puzzle number two, and we can do that by just dropping it right through the slat there at the beginning of the um, puzzle. So I will meet you over at number two. Alright, and like I said, this one is also going to be a parkour solution. Uh, we just need to get up on top of this wall, which we can do on this uh, little protrusion of rock right here. Uh, let's see how many attempts this takes. And there we go. I actually uh, didn't keep track there. How many was that? Ah, uh, okay. Well, anyway, with that solved, um, we're just going to need to get another activator out of this one as well. And unfortunately, we can't use that same trick again. Um, this one is properly blocked off. Uh, so we're going to have to take the scenic route. Thankfully, it's a lot easier to get up here from the other side. We're just going to jump up into the little hillside here. Jump across these little flat bits. Let's try it again. Jump up on these little flat bits and get up here. And there we go. Then we just need to run along this grassy plateau to get to the entrance again. Ignore that. All right, uh, give me a minute and I'll get both of these to puzzle number three. Alright, so in a weird, perverted kind of way, um, we will be doing this puzzle the intended way. Um, just not quite as intended as they intended. Uh, so based on the name of this puzzle, uh, Permeability, the lesson that they wanted to teach you is that by putting a connector, right up, by putting an activator uh, on the other side of the purple screen there, they teach you that you can activate things through solid walls, you don't need line of sight. Um, because then you'll just take that second activator and put it right here, and that'll open this gate. And kind of in a way, we're going to be doing that exact thing, uh, but instead of doing the puzzle as intended, we kind of just brought our own, and we'll be doing it from the outside instead. So we can just put that activator there. No, we don't. Put that activator right there. And then put this one right here. And those daisy chain together along the outside uh, accomplish pretty much exactly the same thing and we learned the same lesson that they wanted us to learn in this one. So, did we really break it? Uh, but anyway, we're going to be doing pretty much the same thing in puzzle number four, so let me move these over there. Alright, so on the back side of number four, um, there's this little secret area, and you're supposed to open this up from the inside using one of the activators uh, to free up this driller, and then you use the driller to get a connector, and then you use the connector to get the Pandora's box star. Um, I definitely never even saw this on my first playthrough, so I think I had just cheesed that Pandora star somehow some different way, because um, this is completely new to me for this playthrough here. Um, but anyway, this kind of acts, uh, or the previous puzzle kind of acted as a tutorial for what we're going to be doing for this one. 
um, because we're still going to be daisy chaining those activators along the outside wall to open the final gate. Um, it's just a little bit more uh, complicated this time. So we're going to open this gate here. And we're going to put that there in such a way that it keeps both of these open. And look at that, we're almost solving this puzzle how they wanted us to. So with that open, we just need to drag this in here, keep that gate open. We're going to reposition this right along the wall. We want to make sure it opens both gates, so we'll put it right about there. And use that again to open that and let us out. And then, just like in the previous puzzle, um, we're just going to daisy chain these over to the other uh, corner there. And by putting this right here, um, we can confirm that little vertical gate symbol is the final gate. So if we put it right there, it will open it. And I don't know if you heard that open uh, on the video, but I heard it open. So now the path is clear all the way to the end. And if you recall from the previous episode, um, it is possible to get items out through the edges of screens, like right here. Um, I don't know if, you know, any area before the last episode um, it was not possible to do this, because I feel like I've tried that before and it never worked until the last episode. Uh, but it also works in this episode, so I don't know if I just got lucky or if I just wasn't good enough at it until the last episode. Uh, but anyway, the next area here is the first lost puzzle, and I kind of want to talk about it a little bit because it's kind of the worst case for breaking puzzles. Uh, this one was really hard to find a novel solution to, um, and that's because it's really far away from other puzzles and it's not in line of sight of them, so you can't like use a jammer or a connector in another puzzle and like point it over here. Um, it also doesn't really have that many moving parts to it. It's got an activator, this connector here, and then an inverter in there that doesn't really do much. Uh, but at the same time, it has a lot of gates. And even if we open three of the gates at once, um, like we are right here, which I'm pretty sure is how you're supposed to do this first step, um, it still leaves this gate over here closed. And you can't get to it with that jammer. You can't get to it with this uh, activator. There's just no way to put it there uh, so that it also overlaps with this. Um, so you pretty much just end up having to solve the puzzle like normal to just get this last gate open, and that's not fun. Uh, I thought maybe if you can get an activator inside the central tower here, you can open all four. Uh, the problem is there isn't any way to get in there. You'd have to jump in from the top, and there's just no way in there. And uh, even once you do get in, there's no way out. So, you know... That wasn't really going to work. Uh, but anyway, my solution for it is to just take this jammer here. And there's a little bit of uh, cliffside right over here that happens to just give us a little bit of a peek at that gate. And we want to make sure we don't get this front gate right here, because that's the first one and that won't do us any good. We want to get this one back there. So we're just going to drop that right there and hope that is steady enough. And we're going to run over and we're going to solve the puzzle. Last time I tried to record this episode, uh, that jammer fell off the cliff and stopped jamming the thing, like, right as I got here. So I, uh, pretty much had to redo the whole episode. Thankfully that did not happen this time. So, uh, our next puzzle is going to be puzzle number five. So in puzzle number five here, uh, something really funny happened my first playthrough. I'll put up a video of it, um, but I was not able to replicate it in this puzzle on this playthrough, uh, which makes me really sad because it's exactly the kind of thing I love showing off. I don't know if maybe they've patched it uh, since I first did it, or maybe I just couldn't replicate it. Uh, either way, at least you can see it on screen there. So we're just going to take this activator here, and we're going to get it outside the puzzle through this hole in the corner. Just like that. And surprise, surprise, we're going to put it outside the puzzle and open a gate inside the puzzle with it. So we're just going to power it with this laser here. And we are free and clear to get to the end. We are going to take a box with us. Uh, we're going to need to get it to number seven up there, um, but we're going to do number six first. So let me just put that right there, and we'll get that, get that out the same way we did the other one. 
There we go. Alright, and let's go on to number six. Alright, so number six here has uh, one of my favorite solves of the entire series, and I will explain why uh, once we get a couple of these items through here in a couple of minutes. So we want to place this in such a way that it opens that gate right there, um, but also is grabbable through this little crack. So that should work right there. And we just reach in just like this, and there we go. And we'll get it through this crack as well. Just like that. We'll connect it to the laser, and the positioning here is very precise. Uh, we want it all the way up into this corner without moving back, so we want it right about there. And we're going to smuggle this uh, box and the other activator through as well. There's one. And two. I find it helps if you can get multiple items out at the same time, uh, because then you don't have to readjust your view or angle or anything. Alright, so let's move these through. So the problem I encountered here is with these two items in here, um, there's no way to get up on top of that pedestal. Even standing on top of the box on the fan, you're just not quite tall enough. And if you activate the fan with the activator here, uh, you still can't get up on top of the box. If you try to jump on the fan while the box is in it, it will just kick the box off. And even if you try to put the box below you on the fan, it just gets kicked off. And after placing the activator, it just does not give you enough time to jump on the box, uh, because unlike with connectors and laser receptacles, uh, there is no delay. It just instantly gets powered as soon as you place it down. And there's no way to place the activator inside the bubble while you're on the fan. Uh, as you can see, it just does not reach. And we can't move the bubble any closer, um, because if we move this over to the right too far, uh, then the laser will not reach it anymore. So it ends up being like right here, which just is not close enough to do anything useful with. So the problem that we have to solve is to delay the activation of this fan somehow. And I noticed after about an hour of fiddling around with this, um, I realized that the fan gets kicked off when you, or the uh, activator gets kicked off the fan when you put the box on it. And if we can aim it so it gets hit into the uh, bubble there, that is the perfect kind of delay that we're looking for. Unfortunately, it only gets kicked off at right angles, so you'll notice even if it's kind of in the diagonal corner there, uh, it still gets kicked off straight forward. And if we move it a little more to the right so it's on kind of the right quadrant there, um, it'll get kicked straight off to the right. We can't kick it diagonally. Uh, however, it just so happens that this bubble is just far enough back that if we find the perfect spot, which is right about there, um, it will get kicked off and just scrape the edge of this bubble here. And uh, it's just close enough to this fan that it will activate it for just a split second. And the timing is really tight, but you'll see just how perfectly everything works out here. So we'll place it here, and it gives us just enough room to jump on top of the box, and then while the box is airborne, we can jump up onto the pedestal. Alright. We got it right. Um, I was just a little bit slow on the jump there, so let's try one more time. And there we go. And that's why that's one of my favorite solves. Alright, and with that done, um, we're just going to take that box and we're going to head up to number 7 next. Alright, so this was another fairly tricky uh, puzzle to break. Uh, and part of that reason is you can't really do anything with this uh, activator here. As soon as you grab it, you're just locked in here, uh, which forces you to free up the jammer somehow. So you can jam this gate and get this out, but at that point you've already solved like 90% of the puzzle. Uh, and at that point, why even bother breaking it? So uh, I had to come up with an alternate solution, and the best thing I could come up with is to smuggle this box in. There's a little crack right here. And if we place this right here, we can get it inside. 
And uh, we couldn't just smuggle this out, because if we did that, then we have no way of getting out without the box. Uh, however, the box lets us get up on top of the cliff here. And from there we can get outside the puzzle. Uh, but the first thing we're going to do, actually we can smuggle that out. And then get up here. And we're going to need the jammer later, uh, so we do need to jump in the jammer room and get this out. And the way we're going to do that is to jam it and also place it in a spot that we can reach through this little corner here and grab it. Gotta love these little gaps. So useful. Just like that. And then with that jammed, oh, we don't even need to jam that, honestly. Oh, it was uh, so we can get in there later. But that will be later. We're going to grab this out here. And we're going to run it all the way to the other side. And as we've done a handful of times before, we're going to power it from the outside. Um, but it's not powered quite yet, and we're not going to do that until after the next puzzle. Um, so I will meet you guys up at the other last puzzle. Alright, and in this one, we are going to ignore most of the mechanics of the puzzle. Um, all we have to do is just power this fan here. And I noticed, uh, normally you can't get onto that little uh, ledge there from the fan, no matter how you try, you just can't reach it. However, if you put a box out in front of you as you're falling uh, and hit space to try to jump to it, it will obviously fail because you can't jump onto a falling box, but it something does happen and it gives you just the uh, extra distance you need to get up there. So let's try that. And just like that, that works. Now once we're up here, we can just run around the wall and solve it. Alright, and now that all the gates are open, um, we're just going to smuggle a connector out. And we're going to do that using our little ladder trick that we uh, showed off in North, no, South 1 I think it was. So we're just going to stack those there. We're going to take a connector. And put it right there where we can grab it. We're going to get up on top of the wall here. We want to jump over to that other wall. And jump over to that one right there. And from there we can just jump over. And with connector in hand, um, we're going to do a little bit of mountain climbing. The likes of which we have not seen since uh, South 1. Thankfully this one is going to be a little bit of a shorter route. So I'll meet you at the start. Alright, so on this bridge here leading to the gold puzzle, um, if we go along the left side here, we can jump off onto this little mountain. And with some creative jumping, we can get up over here. There we go. We're kind of here overlooking uh, puzzle number seven, but if we keep going further... Alright, these jumps are a little bit precarious. Uh, if we fall down there, it's... Welp. Alright, let me see if I can get out of here. I think I can get out of here. Okay, um, hopefully that hasn't reset anything, and I have a sneaking suspicion. No, it hasn't. I don't really know uh, what happened. The game, I guess, just decided that I was too stuck and uh, reset me. Thankfully, it left everything in position, so it didn't ruin any of our setups. So uh, let's just try that one more time. All right, so as I was trying to say before, I was uh, so rudely interrupted last time. Um, it's a bit of a precarious jump over to there, um, and we really don't want to fall down there because, well, you saw why. 
So I think I can do this on the first try as long as I'm just careful. So we're gonna jump here and we wanna jump right there and then up on top of here. And we wanna make it right over to that little spit that's uh, sticking out right there. Just do that like that. We almost got it, so let's try again. As long as you're careful, you won't fall off. I guess I wasn't careful. All right, I will see you guys uh, in the third attempt. All right, third time's the charm, right? Right? Would you believe me if I said this isn't even the only time in this uh, video that we're going to have to make this jump? Eh. Uh. Hey, I actually did the clip this time. Alright, please let this be the one. As long as we just jump carefully and don't make any stupid moves, it's not that hard. Hey, and we finally did it. Okay, now that we're up here, we just very carefully jump up these little flat spots. And we are now up on top of the very tip top of the mountain over here. So, funnily enough, um, the kitty cat face easter egg uh, I just completely found by accident. It was right here on the back side of the statue. Uh, but we will be back here later for the easter eggs, and that's why I said that's not the only time we have to make that jump. Uh, but anyway, with that out of the way, let's just keep climbing up here. And it is quite a spectacular view from this spot. It's almost like they wanted you to be right here overlooking this tower. Okay, enough of that view. So if we jump right over here, also there's a hole in the world right over here. Uh, definitely don't fall into this one. I really don't think you're gonna survive. Anyway, that's enough sightseeing. Um, we have puzzles to break. And we're gonna finish this one off by jumping right across the uh, back of the giant here, just like this. Not like that. Just like this. There we go, that was much better. We just want to climb right up the top here. Hmm. Alright, and now that we're finally up on top of this bit, um, it gives us the perfect vantage point and a perfect little flat spot that lets us put down this connector. Right there. It even looks like a little flat brick patio type of thing right there. It's almost like they wanted us to be right here. Alright, so with that beautiful laser doing that, um, let's take one of the largest leaps that we've taken in this series to date and uh, get back down there. And now we can just run in and solve it. That may be the uh, longest period of time it's taken me to solve that. I don't know how long that took real time because I don't know when I started, uh, but I'll flash the time up here. Anyway, with that one done, all we have left now is puzzle number eight. So uh, let's go down there. Alright, so in number 8, um, we're going to be upgrading one of our exploits a little bit. Uh, so that thing that we've been doing where we've been reaching through the edges of gates or uh, gaps like this, uh, we're basically going to be doing the same thing, but instead of our hands, it's going to be a laser going through. I don't know why I picked up that box. We don't need it. So we're just going to take this connector and we're going to put it right about here. We're just going to use this to get to the other side. And if we put this in just the right spot, um, you will notice that we can actually get the laser through the gap. Because that doesn't look broken or anything. Alright, so we actually need to move this a little bit further. Right there. And that's as simple as that. So with all the puzzles out of the way, let's do our sparks next. And the very first one is going to be at the top of the little stack of fans over on this side of the... Uh, 
area, so I'll meet you there. Alright, so we're going to jump into one fan. And two fans, and that will throw us right up against it. Alright, and the next one is over by puzzle number five, so I'll meet you there. Alright, and with that one out of the way, it's time to do our Easter eggs. And to get to our very first Easter egg, we're just going to run right back to puzzle number eight. Alright, and we are back up on top of this uh, grassy plateau. In fact, the same one that we ended up on uh, after we broke out of puzzle number two. And you might think that we could have just uh, done this to get up into puzzle number two, but that's not the case. Um, there's actually a wall that you jump off of right over here, and you just can't go over it this direction. But anyway, um, if we get between the statue's legs, which we can do by jumping on these rocks here, we will find a rather crudely placed fan right between his legs. And where does this fan lead? to a puddle of water. Don't think too hard about that one. And then our next Easter egg is right around the corner behind puzzle number one here on the cliff side. And if we walk over here, um, there is a sign that says, don't look down. And what happens if we do? You get punched. It's a very classic Crow Team style Easter egg right there. I really like it. All right, and our next Easter egg um, is going to be halfway up that fan cliff again. So let's run over there. But this time we're going to immediately jump back down because hidden on this cliff side here is a hidden entrance, and hidden inside this hidden entrance is a hidden theater. And if we head into the projection room right here, we can find this. We'll load it into the projector, and uh, let's watch the movie. Oh, that was so good. I can't wait for the release of the Talos Principle movie and uh, what was that, 2063? Anyway, 
Uh, let's exit this hidden theater here and head on to our next Easter egg, uh, which is the one that we've already seen. It's that kitty face at the top of the mountain. Uh, hopefully it will be a lot easier to get to this time, uh, but we'll see. I'll meet you there. All right, and as we saw before, kitty face, right there. All right, our next Easter egg is located right straight down here. Let's take another flying leap off this mountain. And we've got one of those lost holograms right here. This one is of a Tesla coil, um, like the many that you see inside the mega structure. And uniquely, this one is actually solid. I don't think we've encountered a solid hologram yet. Uh, at least I don't remember one. Maybe I'm wrong, but I think this is the first one that's solid. All right, and the final Easter egg is all the way at the top of that other mountain, past that gold puzzle. And uh, thankfully they put a shortcut so that we didn't have to run all the way up there again. Right? Right? Yeah, no, there's no shortcut. I'll meet you there. Okay, and now that we're finally up here, um, we can just jump on this little um, slope right there and get up on top of this ridge. And from up here, we have quite a spectacular view straight down of puzzle number three. And uh, had I known of this spot up here before I started routing this area, uh, I may have just decided to jump down into the end of puzzle three as the solution. Uh, but that's not how things shook out, and I decided to go with the solution that you already saw. So anyway, um, let's just run over here, and if we jump down all the way down to this uh, elbow over here. And in this cave over here, we will find the monolith from 2001 A Space Odyssey. This was responsible for uplifting humanity in the canon of the series. Uh, but it seems like we are already uplifted enough in this form, because when we get too close to it, uh, it kind of gets angry at us. Which is really cool. So uh, anyway, that is all of the Easter eggs done. So let's finally go solve the Tetramino Bridge, uh, deal with the tower, and finally be done with this godforsaken area. Oh, and real quick, I just wanted to point out, this statue has eyeballs. Have fun sleeping tonight. Alright, and with West 2 finally behind us for good, uh, it is time to bring this episode to an end. Uh, as always, I'd like to thank everybody for making it this far in the series so far. If you have anything to say to me, uh, just leave a comment. I love the feedback. I will take everything into account into whatever future videos that we have left in this series. Um, I love reading comments that people leave. It always makes my day. Uh, so anyway, uh, join us next time as we tackle West 3, which is uh, the High Plane. All right. See you next time. Peace. So I actually have three different ways of solving this puzzle, uh, going from least broken to most broken, which leaves us to our third. Of course, why deal with overlapping lasers at all? And then for our red one, you might ask, how can we place this? Where can we place this if these lasers don't overlap?